Our next session, the topic of the next session is notes from an immigrant. And may I call on stage session moderator, Nonita Kalra, editor, Harper's Bazaar. Please welcome Nonita with a huge round of applause. And now may I please call on stage our guest speaker for the session. Our guest for the session is a designer. He's an actor, a model admired for his impeccable sense of style and panache. Please put your hands together as I welcome Varis Aluvalia. When we were driving together to this venue, um, I thought I'd ask Varis a question that he refuses to answer. Uh, everybody asks him, how would you like to be described? And he says, I don't. Um, and then I thought to myself, we actually do have the answer. Varis has made an incredible film that we're going to play next, which will actually introduce you to who he is. Dear America. Dear America, I've got some shocking news for you. You should probably sit down for this. Are you ready? I'm an American and proud of it. I was a Boy Scout in elementary school, senior class vice president in high school, and lost my virginity in college. Sorry you have to hear this, Mom. I also happen to be a Sikh, the world's fifth largest religion. The turban on my head represents my commitment to justice and equality. It represents my commitment to humanity. I'm your neighbor. Let's hang out. Maybe we could go get a smoothie. Love, Waris. Waris, a letter like this to the land of the free and the home of the brave. Why did you need to do this? I think, well, good afternoon, everyone. Hello. Um, I thought it was important to make a very simple um, statement. And that was, that's how it started. Where I have some shocking news for you. And, and the fact that, that that shocking news is that I'm, I'm an American. Um, and in a time and a place where diversity is questioned and, and side saddled and put aside, I wanted to put that in the forefront. Um, you bring up being a Sikh. Um, what has that meant right now? Um, being in America as a Sikh, you were talking about being singled out. Well, I, I feel very lucky because I get to be an American, but then I'm also, I was born in India. So I get to be an Indian also, regardless of the fact that I don't have a PIO card. Um, or, but, uh, and I'd, I'd love to have a citizenship of America and, and, and India, uh, if anyone can help me with that. But uh, it's, and then the third thing I feel very lucky is to have grown up with a faith that talks about equality and that talks about um, humanity. And that's, sort of, that's what I carry forth. And I think that's what all of our religions in, in India do. They talk, about, they talk about humanity and they talk about uh, this, this, this love of, of faith. Um, and yet that's the thing that's missing in America at the moment. You know, we're hearing the term the outsider more and more. Um, what fuels this fear? Is it just how you look, where you come from, the fact that you wear a turban, have a beard? What is so threatening about that? So, that's, that's a subject that I love, sadly love talking about, and this idea of fear. Fear exists in all of us. It exists and it grows, it, it, it's like a seed that gets planted in our hearts when we're young, and then it grows and grows and grows. It is the easiest emotion to latch onto. Um, and it's not, it's not they're afraid, 
it's we're afraid, I'm afraid. There's, there's too much finger pointing, like America is racist or France is racist. Or we, we all have to accept that responsibility in ourselves. We all have to look at our own fears and our, and our own limitations. Um, but this idea of, of fear and, and, and stepping, it's about stepping past your own fears. And how do you recommend somebody does that? Because we were sitting and talking about my land versus the foreigner, and we, you said that you were really interested in that subject and you wanted to maybe find a solution or offer a solution to end the battle. Well, it's this, it's my land versus the foreigner. It all comes back to the same point, whereas the other, right? The, the, the other. We always look at someone else as the other, not as, not as the self, the same. This is, we're, we're of the same flesh and blood, but we always, whether it's because they're from a different region, uh, if you're in America, they're from the south, they're the other, or, you're, or in India, you're the other. It's, it's all about fear of the unknown, fear of the other, except we have to come to realize that it's, we're actually the, the same. There, 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 is, there is no other. We, and, and, and currently, um, in the United States, one month after the election, there were 1,094 bias-related crimes in the United States. One month after the election, during that first, during that first month. That, that other is all of us in this room. That other is, is anyone that does not look like the normal American, which is, which is white. Essentially, so if you are, so that other is everyone. It's it's not just um, this, and I know there's an immigration ban, and it, uh, you know the, this 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 fear of Islam and this fear of, but no one when they're when they're when they're coming to attack you when they're when they're you know these bias crimes, no one's stopping to say, I'm sorry, can can I trouble? Are you Hindu, Sikh, Muslim, or Buddhist? Because I I need to know before I hit you, right? Like so, we're all the other. We're all in the same boat, and it's, it's about stepping away, and I know this is, this is going to sound crazy, but stepping away or learning to step away from self-interest. This is what we're, we're stuck with it. How can I get further? How can I push my ideas further? How can I get my family? How can... Is it really as simple as that? Self-interest. Is, is the sort of um, the reactions we're seeing to the other just about self-interest? Is that what President Trump has created? Uh, it, it's it's not it's not a new problem, right? Fear, hatred. This has been this has been a problem. This has been a disease. Humanity has to has has dealt with for centuries. This isn't the first time this is this this is this is happening. Well, it's not a first time for you. You were stopped from boarding an Air Mexico flight when you were coming back home. Um, and, even, and you took to Instagram, right? And you turned it into a movement. Do you want to talk a little about that? Because um, I read that you refused to get back, you refused to board a flight till you, not only, you didn't want an apology, you wanted um, cultural sensitization. The, they, w they wouldn't let me on the plane. Uh, I had followed all the security protocol because I, I always like to say I like to be safe on the plane too. I want to make sure there's nothing there's nothing wrong and, and, and I think everyone should be searched. So I followed all the uh, uh, security protocols and then and then even after that they 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 asked to remove they asked me to remove my turban and I knew they were in the, the wrong and they didn't have any legal standing and so I. I wanted to go home, uh, I had plans, and, but I realized that the next person after me, you know, because shortly thereafter, my, my friends called the, the president of the airline, my the friend's family owns the airline, so they said, please get back on the plane, here's some tickets, and I realized if I got on that plane tomorrow, if someone else is trying to get on that plane with any, any difference, any, any religious, not just sick or, or, or any, anything that, that, that looks odd and looks strange, uh, they're going to have that same trouble. And it's my responsibility in that moment to, 
to not just that. The apology was to, was to get them to admit they're wrong. It's what we were going after was the education. Because everyone can make mistakes. We can all make mistakes. I make mistakes all the time. Um, but it's how you come back from that. And that was, that's why I stayed. And I said, until you, until you commit to education, I'm not leaving Mexico. And that's not a really terribly, you don't have to feel that bad for me. Mexico is not a terrible place to be stuck. Um, you've been quoted saying, ignorance and fear is the flag humans carry. We have to be vigilant to fight that. Um, you've had to fight this fight for a while. Uh, when your posters in 2013 were put up in the subways of New York, your Gap posters that said, make love, people turned it to make bombs and said, stop driving taxis. Um, why do you get this abuse? I, I don't, the good news is I don't take any of it personally. Because it's not, I hope. It's, it's, it has nothing to do with me, and it, it has to do with, and you, you can't take this person. I mean, we're, we're sitting in a room full of people with incredible access, incredible power, incredible knowledge. Um, and I sit here and I think, what, what is the conversation we should be having? What is the conversation we should be having about building a a stronger India, a stronger world, a stronger, stronger companies that address the needs of a changing world, right? And, and race and bias and um, the environment, all those things, that the, the time has changed and there's, and it's such an incredible opportunity to embrace, to, to embrace this change. So we were talking about this. You said that Gap came out and supported you when your posters were defaced. Since that particular um, reaction to your campaigns, you've become, the way you look, you've become a poster boy for almost change and for um, cultural diversity. Your most recent association with uh, a fashion brand, Couples, also sort of talks about your borderless way of life. We were talking about corporate responsibility in a sense. Do you want to say a little about that, how all your associations have grown? I think um, there's the, the, the sense of corporate responsibility on, only comes into place when it's, it, it affects the, the brand's bottom line. It has to, it has to feed it. So it, it can't be separate from the company's, it can't be separate from the company's goals. But, but you mentioned two interesting uh, two interesting incidents. One was the gap, and the other one was Mexico City, the incident in Mexico City. And they're two different corporations, and they handled it two different ways. When the gap incident happened, gap responded within three hours and in, support, in, support, in support of me, in support of diversity, in support of, you know, and, and by doing so, they had thousands upon thousands of fans, Indian fans, setting up Facebook pages saying, we love the Gap. They created an immense amount of goodwill. Whereas, take another, the other company, Aeromexico, who didn't react or respond for two whole days. In this, in this day and age, those two days are two weeks, and they created such an immense amount of bad will, right, for, for themselves, and it, it just, the, 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 that time has changed where that, that response, that response time and that, that, um, that you, you have to listen to, to your audience. Um, speaking of the audience, you have a day named after yourself. Um, I think Varis is the only person who has um, Varis Aluvalia Day. October 19th, the mayor of New York decided it was his day, so we're a bit late to wish you, but Tell me something, has that changed how you view New York? Do you feel safe on the streets of New York? Because we, we hear about random acts of violence, you've suffered a lot. Does New York feel safe? New York feels as safe as any other, any other big city. That, I, don't, I don't feel unsafe there, that's, that's my home. I've grown up there since I was, uh, since I was five years old. And even, even after 9-11, I was physically assaulted. Um, and so I've, I've faced, 
you know, no, no matter what, no matter what they, you know, no matter what they come and throw at us, it, it, it doesn't matter. There's a resilience. Like that's that's my, those are my streets. That's my my city. Um, so yeah, I, I I feel I feel safe there, uh, regardless. Who are these people who are attacking you? The American? Is that absolutely incorrect to say? Yeah, because I I think it's it's a it's this fear. It's this fear. It, we go back to what we started talking about. It's this fear of the other. Um, and, and that video that was, that was there was just sort of saying, uh, I don't know how the audio was, but it was, you know, it, I was just saying, hey, guess what? I'm, I'm an American. I was a Boy Scout in, in elementary school. I was, you know, uh, senior class vice president in high school. I'm, I'm just like you. Because how I view myself is just, I, I'm, I'm an American. I don't see myself as, as, as the other. I see myself as, as me. That's part of the fabric of, of that culture. You were American enough, enough to say you wanted a smoothie and not coffee, because coffee is not good for you anymore, no, right? Coffee is terrible. Um, no, but seriously, um, what is maybe sort of the weirdest thing you've been called? Because my mind keeps going back to, to being assaulted, to being abused. And it is a new America. This is not something that one has seen. Uh, post 9-11, yes, it's changed, but there is a sense that it's been hyped up and it's, it's been amped up, not hyped up, it's been amped up um, since the recent election. I think the, the weirdest thing that it may have been called, um, I think the, the answer is twofold. The weirdest thing, and, and it's not weird, but the, after 9-11, after it's quite obvious. Um, the weird, you know, uh, being called Osama bin Laden, you know, but, you know, but if you walk down the street. Uh, but then when I was grow when I was growing up, and I was re when I was really young in in New York, the I remember, uh, you know, kids going by on buses and 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 screaming, "Hey, Gandhi!" And uh, so na now I'm like, please, that that's how me, me? God, uh, thank you, you know. <laughs> I, I, I would love that. I, I wish they screamed Gandhi now. Um, but yeah. Well, you know, um, I've tried not to take a certain name because you reacted really badly to it in the car. But the truth is, it's a new America and they have a new president. And I'd love to know what, what you would say to him right now. Uh, what advice would you give him, both as Gandhi and as Varus Aluvalia? I don't have that much to say except find your humanity. That's really it. Find your truth. Find your, find your humanity. There's, it's not, it's not a, there's really not much else to say. Stop forgetting that we're American or Sikh or Christian or Hindu or, or Muslim or we're human beings. And that's the, that's how we should all step forward, first, foremost, and always. Thank you, Varus. That was really beautiful. And thank you for being here with us. Thank you. Varus, thanks so much. And I would request uh, the MD for Da Milano, Mr. Sahil Malik, to kindly come on stage and give away a small token of thanks. Thank you so much, Avaris Aluvalia there, ladies and gentlemen.